today is an exciting day because it's Resurrection Sunday. And also because, you know what? I'm going to leave tonight to go to Amsterdam and I'm going to go to Mauritius. That's an exciting day. But the best part is that it is Resurrection Sunday. And you know, when you meet Christian, when it's Resurrection Sunday, have you ever met a grandma who just got a little cute little grandbaby? They're like, oh, my grandbaby is the best of the best. You can see the sparkle in their eyes. But when we meet Christian every day, especially on Resurrection Sunday, it's like, you know my God, you know who my God is, the King of kings. I mean, God, he created the heaven and the earth. He holds the earth in his hand. Where am I here? In here? He, he's, he knows the stars, the galaxies. He's, he knows everything. That's who our God is. So as Christian, when, it is, when we talk about our King, there has to be a sparkle in our eyes. It provoked a jealousy, a good jealousy, that is going to say, I don't know who your God is. I want to know who your God is. And when we talk about Jesus, it's like in the book of Revelation, it talks about the description of Jesus. His eyes is like a flame of fire. When his eyes lock into your eyes, it's like that love of God that come and penetrate deep into you because we've been created for love. That's what we've been created for. So when Christian, we meet other Christian, we talk about Jesus. He holds the, the seven stars. That's who Jesus is. His feet is like brass. I'm not sure how it looked like, but it says it looked like brass. His head is like white as wool, or white as snow. It's like wool. I mean, this is the description of our Jesus. He's our intercessor. When you don't feel like you're praying, the intercessor is praying for you. How many would like that? To have Jesus as, as, like, I'm like, Jesus, yes, I want that. Everybody wants that, right? That's who Jesus is. As Christians, we need to start to know who our God is. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's our teacher. He's our comforter. All of us need to have that passion for the things that really passion. We have pa oh, I love God. I love God. We have to have that passion. The more we get to know God, guess what? That is going to stir something in us because we've been created to worship Him. And today is Resurrection Sunday. We, have been we are called to be overcomers. How many of you are going for a rough season at this time? But guess what? It's temporary. The new season is coming. Everything, everything seems to be dead in winter. But when spring comes, the new season is coming. The new, the new flowers will come up. I'm going to see the tulip in Amsterdam. I'm going to have nine hours of layover in Amsterdam. I'm going to see the tulip. And it's going to remind me of the goodness of God. Like when things seem to be dead, I know he's working in the ground for me on my behalf. Amen. So that's Resurrection Sunday. And the message that I have for you today is in Proverbs 4, verse 23. If you can put that, uh, Jacqueline, the uh, New International Version. It says, uh, God, open your Bible if you have your Bible or your iPad or whatever you have. It says, God, your heart above all things else, for it will determine the course of your life. God, your heart above all things else. What does it mean, above all things else? That means it's very important. It's above everything. Or some versions say, do it with uh, all diligence. So in Above everything else, guard your heart. How do we guard our heart? If, I, if you have a very uh, expensive watch or you have a nice car and you ask somebody to guard that car, does it mean he gives the key to anybody who wants to drive it because it's really nice? Okay, you know what? It's my Tesla. Just drive it, you know. Try it. You, yes. <laughs> no. When I ask Daniel to, to, to guard my Tesla, what he's going to do is that he's going to make sure that it is well kept. The Bible says, guard your heart. How are we going to guard our heart? Because if we don't guard our heart, it will determine the course of our life. One of the ways that we're going to guard our heart is, go to Colossians 3 verse, uh, from verse 1 to 4. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. Set your hearts on things above. The things that are important. You know what it means, set your heart? Set is an active verb. It's like seek and you will find. It's not like 
sit and do nothing. Actually, set your hearts on things above. What it means is that we actively set our hearts on the thing that is above. We are we value the things that God values. If God says it's not good, it's not good. If God says it's good, it's good. So we value the things of above. And the enemy of your soul wants you to focus on the things that are not important. But when we set our hearts on things above, guess what? Our lifestyle is going to follow on the things that we value. For example, if you are a great athlete, you know there are things that you have to eat well, healthy. You have, to, you have to practice. That's their lifestyle. As a Christian, when we start to, as a Christian, when we start to set our hearts on things above, there are things that are not important. We're not going to focus on that. A lot of times we focus on the things that are not important. Like the athlete, the most important thing is they get a good diet, that the food, that the plate is clean and the diet is good food. Will they care that the plate is white? and not yellow, because they prefer yellow? No. What they will care is the food is healthy, it's clean, and sometimes as Christians, we defocus. We are more focused about the color of the plate than the food itself. As long as the food is clean, we should be happy. Let's not defocus, because when we don't set our minds on the things that are above, we start to waste our time on the things that are not even important. And we defocus. And I'm going to talk on Genesis why it's very important that we, uh, we focus on the things that are important. Because our future, the enemy is interested to destroy, kill. Still kill and destroy our future. He doesn't care too much about your past. Because your past is your past. But if you're going to carry your past in your future, we are not going to make it. If we focus all the time looking backward, we will not be able to move forward. That's why when we drive, we have a big windshield so that we can look forward and a little rear mirror just to make sure that nobody is bumping onto us. We have to be able to look forward in what God has for us because our future is very important. And if we can take our now, he will take our future. What we're going to decide today is going to take our future. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. We're going to learn from that. But what we're going to do is that we're going to start to guard our hearts so, and set our hearts on the things above so that we can move forward in what God has for us. Amen? And another thing is in Matthew 24... Verse uh, 10 to 12, it, it talks about the end time right then. It's talking about the end time. It says, then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. When it says, then many, if there are 10 people, I say many of them are wearing black. Does it mean the minority or the majority? It means majority. So in the end time, many will be offended. We need to make sure that we don't get offended very easily. Because if we get offended very easily, guess what? We will not be able to continue the course. And will we be offended? I can guarantee you, yes. Because as long as there are people, there will be one people who will say the wrong word or will rub you on the wrong side. You will always have that. But we need to guard our heart. Is it important? It's not important. I'm not going to focus on the things that are important. Because I have a, the... The Bible says, you know what, Jesus is going to come for a glorious bride. He's going to come for the perfect bride. If he says he's going to come for a glorious bride, are we not going to believe what he said? Are we not going to believe on his own wish or desire or truth? If he says he's coming for the glorious bride, he's coming and we are one of them. We need to set ourselves apart from that. And God our heart and know that we will make it. Why are we going to make it? Because Jesus said so and we are going to have it ready. And you know what happened? Always remember, in a wedding, just uh, 10 hours before the wedding, do you think the bride is ready when you look at her? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think she has all her makeup. Maybe her nails is done, but her makeup is not done yet. Her dress is not on yet. But she has prepared everything. When you go to somebody's place, if they're going to get married in 10 hours, I guarantee you most of the time, most likely they will have everything ready. They will have their dress ready. They will have their jewelry ready. They will know who is going to do their hair. They will know who is going to do their makeup. 
Same with the body of Christ. You might be saying, you know what, I don't think I'm ready yet. You will be ready if you prepare yourself. Because when it's coming, you will be. And guess what? One month before the wedding, some of the preparations are done. One week before the wedding, most of them are done. On the day of the wedding, all are prepared. This is a season of us to prepare ourselves for the wedding that is coming. We've been talking about Jesus is coming. Let's be ready. And we cannot be ready without the help of each other. We cannot be ready without the help of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm really encouraging you this Easter. We are called to be overcomers. We are called to guard our heart and not let our heart be offended. We are called to set our, our minds on things above, especially our minds. Because I can tell you the non christian are using the godly principle and it's happening because the sun rises up for the good and the bad. It's not like, oh, you know what? You kill somebody. The sun is not going to rise for you. It's only going to rise for my Christian people. No. The sun rises for everybody because that's the goodness of God. Even if you kill somebody, the sun is going to rise for you as well. Not just because you're a Christian. So every godly principle is going to happen for the Christian and the non-Christian. What is happening is that the non-Christian are using godly principle or they are gaining ground. And that's wonderful. But as Christians, we need to understand the Word of God. We need to know what God says and to trust the Word of God. Because I can tell you something, Satan knows the Word of God. But you know what he doesn't have? He doesn't have the heart of God. We might be Christian, we might know the Word of God, but if we don't have the heart of God, I guarantee you it's not good. How many of you, you can tell me that, you know what, a lot of time you, you've talked to people and you know the Word of God and you know it's right, but it has hurt that person so badly because we haven't had the, word of God, the heart of God. I think most of us are guilty of that. Know the Word of God. Have the heart of God because remember that Satan know the word of God, but he cannot have the heart of God because the heart of God is what? Is to give us life and life more abundantly. And the heart of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. So in our heart, if we have that heart of God and you have the word of God and we are able to use that, guess what? We are going to be overcomers. And we are over. How many believe you are overcomers? We are overcomers. That's what the Bible says about us. We are overcomers. And I want you to turn to, to Genesis chapter 2 now, and I'm going to end on that. God said to, to Adam, you can eat everything from the garden, but accept the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And then the serpent come, and the serpent come, and he said to, he, guess what he said? He's, he challenged. He said, to, he said to Eve, he said, uh, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? It sounds very innocent. Oh, do you think uh, the God that you serve is really good? Look at you. It's not happening. It's not happening. Sometimes does those mind come to your head? The God that you say you serve, look at you. It's like uh, nothing is happening. And yet you know the promise of God. He promised us to be overcomers. He promised that he's never leave us nor forsaken. He promised that he's low to anger, abounding in love, right? Has God indeed said that? You shall not eat of every tree? And the woman, he said, he repeat what the word of God said. He said, yes, we're not going to do that. God says no in verse 3. God put verse 3. God says no, we shall not do that because if we do that, we're going to die. Guess what the next verse? The enemy right away said what the word of God is not true. He said, then the serpent said, you will not surely die. This is contrary with the word of God, from the word of God. Totally the opposite of what God said. I'm sure many times, some of us, we go through season. We know what God said to us. And then you have those people might come to us and say, ah, it's not going to happen. Or our own mind, because there are three voices that we hear, the voice of God, our voice, and the voice of the enemy. And guess what? It's not going to happen. And we're like, what did the enemy just did now? He lent a seed of doubt. You should take it. When you take it, guess what? You're going to be able to see everything. You're going to, to be just like God. Now our insecurity rise up. Oh, yeah, yeah. How come, God? You don't give it to me. And, and now 
God, but you're not for me, really, because if I, if I do eat that, it's going to be better. I'm telling you, if we settle and, and we focus on what God has said, we will be able to overcome every obstacle that God, or, or every obstacle that the enemy put in our path, because God is for us. So it, my message today is, for this Easter, be passionate for the King of Kings. When you talk about Jesus, have that sparkle in your eyes that people will know that you are a lover of Jesus, that you are not from this world, and that you are able to overcome. When I look at you in your face, Anna, I will need to be able to see the God in you, the power of God in you. When I look at you, John, it's like the power of God in you. No, no, look at me. I'm just, I'm, I don't know what's happening. No! Yes, it might be tough, but guess what? When we pray, when Jesus prayed, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, you know what happened? He was in torment. And the Bible said when he prayed, the angel of the Lord came and gave him strength. I don't know what you're going through right now. You pray. The angel of the Lord will come and give you strength. And remember, you are an overcomer. Amen? Amen.